Hello, in today's video we are going to be looking at this. Now this is a power line adapter and you might not know what a power line is. Now basically where your router comes into your house might not necessarily be where say your computer is or your TV is. So ideally it would be nice to connect either of those devices or both of those devices through a wired network connection. But realistically to do that, you'd have to run a massive network cable between the two points. If your smart TV is up in your bedroom and your router's downstairs, then that's a long bit of cable. And unless you wanna get someone in to hide it in the walls, that's gonna make a bit of a mess. Now a power line turns your electricity cables in your walls into networks and it's very clever and I'm not entirely sure how it works. I think it puts some kind of signally interferency stuff, that's very technical, onto the power wires and it is decoded the other end by the power line adapters. Now this is just a starter kit but you can add quite a few of these around your home. So basically say this one will be next to my router and this one will be say up in my office. And in theory, you have a very high speed internet connection in my office provided by this. So I'm very excited to see how it works and if indeed it does work. Now I've gone for the TP-Link AV2000 because apparently it can do 2000 megabits per second, which is a lot. And if I want to, I can add more of these to the network and they can all communicate to each other and all share that super fast speed. Well, that's the theory anyway. Now the speed you get does depend on the quality of the wiring in your home. Now, if you've got a relatively new house like this, or it's been recently rewired, then you should in theory get full speed, but it doesn't always work like that. So even though this says it can do 2000 megabits per second, that is under optimum conditions. And as we know, life is not an optimum condition. Now, there are a few gotchas with power line things and stuff you need to bear in mind. You can't plug these into extension leads. These need to be plugged in directly into the socket on the wall. Now you could use the through socket and plug an extension lead into that, that's absolutely fine, but you can't plug these into extension leads because they won't work as effectively. And if you've got an extension lead that has surge protection, the surge protection stuff will actually interfere with the signal, so it probably won't work at all. So basically, you need to have a power outlet near to wherever you want your network connection. But in theory, most things that need a wired network connection will be powered by the mains. Now you can buy these that don't have a through socket, so you can't plug anything else into that socket, but those are a little bit cheaper. These are quite expensive. I think I paid around about 120 pounds for this kit, but realistically, chasing the walls and running cables up them and everything like that will cost a lot more than this did. I mean, I would like to get the house fully wired in future, but this will certainly do for the time being. And I genuinely hope that it works. So all I need to do is go down to the comms cupboard and plug in one of these and run a network cable from my router into the top of there. And then upstairs, all I need to do is plug this into a socket and then get the LAN cable from the top of here, either into my computer or my laptop. We'll see which one I choose. And that is it. I think they automatically pair um, they do have a pairing button if they don't, but we'll see when we test it out. Uh, but before we do anything, we need to actually get this out of the box. So let's do that. So let's take a look. I think both of these are identical. So there is the unit. It's not massive, but it's not tiny either. And then you've got the network points at the top. You've got some LEDs for indication there, the power, I think pairing and also network activity. Um, and then you've got the pairing button there on the side. And that's about it really. So it just plugs into a standard UK socket and the power is also transferred to here so you can still continue to use the socket. So in theory, the internet connection from my router can go in here and then we'll just pretend this is at the other end. I could plug my computer into this one and a printer into this one, or computer, TV, 
laptop, TV, you know, anything. You can basically plug in any network device. Now, obviously, Wi-Fi is great and it's fast, but sometimes you just need a solid, stable cable connection. And effectively, this is what this provides. Now, you don't necessarily need to use it to transfer your internet connection. You could just use it to extend your network. So if you've got an office outside in the garden, which we're going to have soon, more on that in future videos, then so long as you're on the same power ring in the house, um, you can actually transfer the, the network connection down to a remote location. But it does have to be connected to the same consumer unit. If you've got a separate unit, then it probably won't work. It doesn't mean it definitely won't work, but more than likely it won't. Okay, so we've got this little quick installation guide. And this sort of explains the setup that I've spoken about. There you go. It's as simple as I've said. And you can create a secure power line network should you wish to. And you can also join an existing secure power line network if you want to. It really is very, very straightforward. So we'll just check out what else is in the box. So obviously we've got another adapter. And then I think we've just got two Cat5e network cables. And that's it really. And that's all it needs to be. So uh, I think what I will do is I'll go downstairs and plug this in in the comms cupboard and then uh, come upstairs and plug this one in here somewhere. Hmm, exciting. So uh, yeah, let's switch to my phone to record downstairs. Okay, so we are down in the cupboard and there is my hyper optic router doing its thing. And uh, we've got a spare socket down here. So uh, let's plug that in and then turn it on. Oh, hang on. Bit of a uh, squeeze behind here to turn it on. There we go. I'm just going to plug in a network cable from the router. Okay, that's in properly. Excellent. We've got an activity light on. So now let's go up to the office and plug the other end in. Okay, so now we've got the power socket where my computer is. And let's plug this in. Let's plug in a network connection to my computer. So there we go, network connection to my computer is plugged in. Oh, I think they're talking to each other. Okay, so it's all plugged in and I'm back at my desk now and we're just going to have a little look at this app and it's from TP-Link's website. I'll put the address for it in the description of the video. Uh, so this sort of shows basically the two devices on their network. So what we've got, we've got two of them linked up here and it's showing that we're getting around about 990 megabits per second through the wiring, which is actually quite good. I'm pleased with that. And that's almost sort of full speed. So that is perfect. Now, obviously, it is a 2000 megabits per second unit, but I think that's really in very, very, very ideal conditions. But I'm pleased at the speed that it's getting because I've literally had to do nothing apart from plug in two things at different ends of the house. And I've got a network connection here now. I've got a wired, fast network connection. So that's really smart. Now you can have some control over the devices from here. Now I know this one is the one that's downstairs in the comms cupboard and this one here is the one that's upstairs. So I can uh, enter a new device name. So I will just say device studio, save. And you can also turn the LEDs on or off. So if you've got this in a bedroom or something like that and you don't want LEDs flickering and annoying you through the night, you can turn it off. Um, you can reset the device here to its factory settings, or you can, uh, and you can see there the firmware version. Um, and there's also the advanced controls. 
So you can set the traffic with the most priority. So I'm going to say that probably internet is the most important one because that's what I'm using this primarily for as an internet connection for this device. Uh, so I'll save that. But if you have this, say, plugged in for a VoIP phone, then you can choose voice over IP, or if you're into gaming, online game, or audio and video, so if you're doing Zoom calls and stuff like that, that is probably the most important one for you. There's a facility here to do an update. I don't actually know if there is an update available for these. I might check that afterwards, but yeah, you can do a firmware update. And then also you can turn on and off different modes here. Now by default, the power saving mode is switched on. I have turned it off because I've seen a lot of people in the comments of the Amazon review complaining that they had dropouts with signal and stuff. And the way to fix it was by turning the power saving mode off. So personally, I'd switch it off. It just makes sense. Now this bit here is something to do with getting interference on your VDSL line. I've not had this issue myself, so I've switched it off and it says uh, it, will, uh, it will slow down speeds as well. So we don't want that on for us at least. And then yeah, up here we've got a device that's in the comms cupboard. So I'm going to rename it device comms cupboard. Um, the LEDs again can stay on in there. It's fine, it's a cupboard reset and stuff like that. And so hopefully now if I hit the refresh buttons here, there we go, they both changed their name. And uh, yeah, it's just sort of doing its thing. It's awesome. So uh, let's just do a little speed test. Now in theory, it should give me the full one gig speed, but we're not under perfect conditions. Other things on the network are on and doing stuff. So it might not be full speed. But, you know, I'm pretty happy if I sort of get like, you know, 200 meg or something like that. You know, I'm, I'm just pleased that I've got a network connection here to my computer. And that is the primary function of it. So uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so it's connecting. There we go, ping of four. Yep, download, creeping up. Yeah. Oh, look, there we go. Going over the 200 meg marker now. 210. I'm happy with that and upload is quite important from here because it's where I upload all the videos and that's creeping up nicely. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's good. Oh, nearly just a smidge under 200. Now, as I say, this isn't 100% perfect conditions because obviously there are other things connected to the network and downloading and uploading and all that stuff. So it's not a proper true test of everything because basically I can't be bothered to switch everything off. But it works, we've got a nice fast internet connection between up here in the studio and down there in the comms cupboard. So yeah, that is really good, I'm happy with that. Now we can obviously buy further power line adapters and expand the network. So if James needed a network connection in his bedroom, we could just buy another power line adapter, plug it in and we might need to pair it. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you don't, but in theory it should just work. And yeah, I'm really happy with that. So uh, yeah, that's a great way of getting a network connection from wherever your router is to somewhere completely different in your house. There's not really much else for me to say. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but for now it's game over.